It's March, spring is approaching, and it's Women's History Month. I think this month I'd like to dedicate all of my creativity to talking about the many layers that make women so special. Ways that in the year of 2024, I am turning into the woman of my wildest dreams. In hopes that with what I share today will inspire you to become the woman of your dreams and many more things. So, let's get started. Treat your body like a temple, not for looks, but for health. You know, growing up in a place like Houston or any major city like Miami or Atlanta, there's a kept woman culture. I mean that in most households, it is normal for a girl to have proper maintenance, like maybe a manicure here and there, or a visit to a hair salon on special occasions or when it was needed. But in Houston, being kept was a full sew-in, lash extensions, a Brazilian wax, eyebrow thinning, and all of the things. And my mother was, you know, raising two girls on her own. So of course, she could barely prioritize her own beauty essentials, let alone doing it all for two younger girls. It wasn't until I started making my own money that I really got into what that maintenance expense actually was, and then it became a crutch. I didn't want to go anywhere if all of the maintenance things were not done. And I looked in the mirror one day and I felt like, hmm, eh. Those things looked good, but are those things truly me? I'm someone that has a very young look. I'm always going to look 16 years old, maybe for a very long time. And when I had all of the things like a sew-in and lashes, it swallowed me more than it actually accentuated my features. And I realized like when I grew into my own and when I wanted to get into films and acting, like I realized like they don't have women with the lashes and all of those. They don't have the characters wear those things for a reason because they just don't read well on film. And unless the character's wardrobe or their costume requires them to have those things, it's just not something that accentuates everyone's features. Like my own, my eyes are very full, so I have to have the right type of lashes to support how small and circular my head is. And when all of those things are coming into play, it just did not serve my features. I feel like I have more of a gamine body type and I think cutting my hair was like the biggest, the greatest thing I could have ever done for my look and for myself as a woman because this is how I feel mostly me. Like I've always felt like most like a fairy type of beautiful, a fairy type of specialness. And I'm 5'3", I'm very small, I'm very petite, but I have long arms, longer legs, and I just am in more alignment with that type of look. And I'm so happy that I actually went forth into changing my appearance into something that, that actually aligns with me. When it was time for me to take my own steps as a woman to define a lot of things for myself, but also defining what a kept woman was in my mind, I realized that a kept woman was a loved woman, not only by the people around her, but loved most importantly by herself to be able to be of service to and nurture herself and whatever that means. Is this woman prioritizing flow and physical movement and fitness into her life? Is this woman prioritizing a healthy diet? Is she moisturizing her skin? Is she drinking water? Outside of the physical things that you can probably buy yourself, are you spiritually connecting with yourself as well as maybe the others around you? Do you have a community that is nurturing for you spiritually and also gives you room to grow, gives you room to make mistakes and learn from them, gives you the grace enough to reach your full potential and not automatically be there? Is she someone that she can come home to, but also is she a home to others? I think this is what a full embodiment of a temple is to me, a sanctuary. Are you a sanctuary for yourself? And if so, what are ways that you define what 
your sanctuary time for yourself means. And I feel like when a woman truly loves herself and when a woman is truly honoring herself, her mind and her body, she is able to find home and peace wherever she is because she knows she is that magic and that missing piece. When a woman is able to find home within herself, she is going to be okay no matter where she is. But we can talk about the products and routines all day. I think really the root of it is, are you doing the things that bring you closer to the woman that you want to be? Are you creating joy within your life? And if so, even if it is small, what are the ways that you're doing that? Accept that nothing is impossible. The woman of my dreams is unstoppable. The woman of my dreams is absolutely unstoppable. She scares me almost a little bit because anything that she wants, she gets. And I have to pay attention to the things that I want because if I want it too much, I know that it's already mine. Everything that my little heart desires, the woman that I want to become can strategically create a plan to bring it forth into my life. All she needs is intention and a required action. I think there is a woman in you and in all of us that is so dead set on our dreams and our beliefs, that it almost scares us. We know that that fire inside, the version of us that is so lit in passion for our dreams, we know that that version of us can make it happen. But we still exist in the version of us in our day-to-day -day that is almost afraid to say the things that we want out loud. We also don't even believe that it's possible because we have been so susceptible to other people's opinions. There are some things that we want that we don't even say. But also I feel like there is a part of us that is afraid of letting that second version of us, that fire, passion-driven version of ourself to take full control. We're afraid of what that version of us is capable of. We're afraid that maybe if we give them full control, this and who we thought we were slowly starts to slip away and then we become someone that we don't even know or maybe the people that we love cannot recognize. And if I can just speak for myself, I will say that the version that I am today and the consistency that I needed to have to push forward to make things happen the way that I want it to, it was a version of myself that the people that I loved and the people that knew me did not know. But I was more dedicated to that version than I was of other people's opinions of me. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I have a life that I want to lead. And I have trails that I want to blaze that sometimes I can't take everyone with me. And that's okay. And I think you reach a point in your life where who you are, your purpose in this life, and the mark that you want to make in this world is so much more important that you don't stand in the way of your higher self. You just allow them to take the full reins because maybe they can see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit better than we can. Like today, I had so many things to do. I worked a lot today, but I came home and I was just like, I, there's just so many things that I wanted to say. There's so many things that I need to get done that I just kind of allowed that person to take full control. And that person probably isn't the most likable because I'm actually trying to get things done. There's things that I'm working on and thinking about, but that's just what I'm willing to do to get the results that I want. What are you willing to do? Have any of you guys seen the show on Disney Plus called The Moon Knight, where the main character had obviously two completely different personality styles, but there was obviously one personality style that was able to just kick a little bit more butt. He was able to get things done, and there was this quarrel that they had where the person that was more subtle, he didn't want to give over that control over their body. He just didn't want to let it go because that person was unaliving people. But at the end of the day, to get to the objective, that person had to take full form. They had to take full control just to get the desired outcome. And when everything was revealed in the end, that version of him, that more powerful, more heroic, that stronger version of him was who he was actually all along. The more subtle, the softer, the shy and an intimidating version of him was just something that he created out of the trauma and to escape the real pain that was going on in his actual life and in the memories and I feel like oftentimes we do that we kind of cower into ourselves to make ourselves seem less intimidating less powerful just so we can kind of get by or just so that others won't see us as a force but like why not 
exist in all that you are meant to be. I knew that when I cut my hair and because of how my personality style is, I'm going to appear a lot more intimidating than I naturally already am. And sure enough, if people didn't really know how to take me before, the haircut just makes it times 10. I don't know why people equate short hair, pixie cuts with people a little bit more spicy, zesty, combative, but that's that's not really me. But when I am sure that I know how to stand up for something that I know needs to be talked about or if I need to stand up for myself or others, I will do that because that's just the type of person that I am. Sorry. Have more inside of you because it is known and proven that brains and personality will take you extremely far. I think as a performer, as an actress, people back in the day and the people that I used to look up to, they always had more to say. They always had more to them. They always had a mission and they had something that they stood for and they were able to advocate for the communities that they needed to and they weren't afraid to speak up for those communities because they realized the responsibility that they had and the platform that they had to you know speak up to use their voice and now that i'm in the process of trying to build myself and i'm trying to allow space for my voice to be heard i realize i had to question myself you know what is inside of me is there more to be said is my research enough and most importantly do I truly feel that my story and my perspective is worthy of being shared? Do I truly feel like the people that I want to advocate for can trust me enough that I could be able to speak for a specific demographic and then be able to identify and resonate with me? And I think that's the most important thing. And they always say like when you start a YouTube channel, you should want to find your audience. And at first I, re I really didn't know. I don't, I don't know what my audience is because I feel like what's happening inside of us and like the things that we go through mentally, spiritually, they happen inside of any and everyone. I think everyone with a sound mind enough or maybe a little bit of a clear mind, someone with a little bit more intuition, you have something inside of you that is constantly speaking to you, maybe telling you that something isn't safe or maybe something isn't right or maybe something does feel right. Not everyone is able to hear that voice. So I guess I want to speak to someone that has a conscious, that is awakened, that is actively living and it also is a part of their journey and it's a part of their existence and they use that to push forward in their life. And that's a lot inside of a person, you know, and I want to make sure that no matter what I become in this world, no matter what I choose to do, whether it's becoming an actress, becoming a writer, becoming a speaker, I want people to know that this is who I am to my core and it resonates so much that people feel comfortable with me maybe speaking up for our community, you know? Be kind, but know when to say no. And we also have to be kind enough to ourselves to know when to say yes to the things that we are worthy for. There is always a fine line between people pleasing and actually doing what actually is good for us. And sometimes women, we have this guilt towards enjoyment. Sometimes as mothers, if you are a mother, you have this guilt towards maybe spending a little extra time with your girlfriends or having an extra drink or being out two more extra hours while someone else is watching your kids because we have this huge responsibility of being responsible for a whole nother life and sometimes when that happens we lose pieces of ourselves we're not even able to be the version of ourselves that we want to be because we also have to be mindful of the minds that we're trying to nurture in this world and it's okay to rest in enjoyment and say yes to the things that feel good to you not because you have to be this completely perfect person to show up but because honestly, you deserve to just be human too. And if anybody judges you for how you choose to enjoy yourself, how you choose to laugh and key and do all of these things, those people are not meant for you. Fuck them, you know? I knew someone that was a very big people pleaser and so much that even the things that she wanted to say yes to because she's so used to being humble because being humble made her more friends. She kind of got stuck there 
and now like all the things the things that that need to be done that she wants to do I feel her kind of pulling back into doing that and I guess what I want to say is like say yes to the things that are for you being humble sometimes is a trap they need you to shrink yourself so they can actually do all of the things that they're afraid that you might do and it sucks when you see people with so much talent so much passion so much charisma and personality but they kind of sit in the comfortability of maybe only a small group of people knowing them they're afraid to really step out and be all they're meant to be and this is for anyone out there that needs the reassurance you need someone telling you what you should be doing or how you need to show up like you already know what you have to do just do it stop looking for outside validation to do the things that are in your heart they're in your heart for a reason and that's all the reassurance that you need you know address your insecurities I had a vision in my mind about the type of woman that I want to show up as and what she looked like and she had very short hair and unfortunately not everyone can identify with that I feel like mostly with men especially they equate beauty to having long hair and it was always a struggle for me even when I was younger because I wanted long hair I wanted all of the things but it just was not genetically me and I had to find okayness in that I'm still valuable even if my hair isn't down my back you know even if I'm not racially ambiguous I am still a beautiful woman and it took a while for me to accept that because of the culture that I grew up in but when I finally did and I actually like looked in the mirror and be like no nah, like I'm hot like I'm great I'm amazing I feel good about myself that's when things kind of turned over for me i wanted to show up in my life a little bit more i wanted to be more present in the things that i was doing because i felt like i belonged there i needed to be there i think in one of my very like earlier videos i talk about you know the black girl that hides herself because it was very much an insecurity for me and i think it was such a big insecurity because i was always existing in spaces where i was the only black woman and when I did grow up in spaces where there were predominantly more people of color, there was still also a little bit of insecurity there too because it's like, I'm going to be honest, the people that were more, you know, known or popular or whatever, all of the cool kids were very hood. They just were very hood. And they were, like, they loved talking about, like, people that were in jail and, like, the bad things that would happen. I'm like, wow, this is very toxic. And I also don't identify with that, you know. I just, I wasn't enough in that aspect. I didn't identify with that part of the culture, but also I exist in spaces where I was the only black person, but I was just too urban. I was too, like I, I was just a little bit too much for them as well. And they feared me more than anything. And I always felt like I was in the middle in this limbo of not really being good enough there, not really being good enough there. And I just wanted to find a space in the middle where I can be my multifaceted self. But I was so insecure about showing up and saying, you know what, I like cartoons and alien documentaries or I like, you know, drag race. I love watching like balls and I love watching dance and I was just so different and I think when you are different from the communities that you've been brought up in it can build a lot of insecurities and in how you want to show up in the world in your adult life and there's always this fear that someone is going to look at you and look at your interests and say mm. and um that used to be me and I think I reached a point where I'm just like I think I it was I had a conversation with um, one of the younger girls that I work with, super sweet, but they're like 19, 20, 21, like in that age group, very Gen Z, you know, very fun, very adorable. And one of them expressed to me, you know, their like for anime. And she was saying, yeah, you know, it is a little quirky. It's this, it's that. And I'm like, no, girl, like you're cool. Like people still love anime. Anime is very cool. Like I'm 30 years old damn near and a lot of people older than me are connected to anime and regardless of whatever people in your community feel about that genre of entertainment it's cool you know and um just don't you remember like being in school and 
like feeling so outside of what was cool because of the things that you loved and you know you couldn't really share it and you couldn't really talk about it much because not a lot of people were into it and it's like when you become an adult and you have this freedom you still exist in the barriers in your mind of what you had when you were younger and I'm so happy that I was able to be that person in her life to tell her like nah girl like you're actually cool like you're one of the coolest people that I probably know because she was so educated on it she gave me a list of different animes that I should watch and it was just so sweet it was just so special and if I could meet anyone that has an insecurity about anything I just want them to kind of lean into it because your insecurities and the things that mean the most to you make you special and make you different and I just want to be that friend in someone's life to say like yeah okay whatever those insecurities are care about them enough to nurture yourself through them or for you to realize that you know maybe that's not something that you should be insecure about maybe that's something that you should just love yourself through you know you're different you're special you're unique and that's why you deserve to be here that's why you were made to exist and show up in this world and be that special one percent of a person that has your quirks or has your interests has your insecurities has your flaws and i think that's what makes women so unique is because outside of all of that we we still show up and we can be sexy and we can be powerful and we can be strong and we can be super talented and educated and um yeah be able to trust and fully rely on yourself I think growing up with a single mom, I always knew the importance of like having to do it on your own and not to say that that was necessarily a bad thing, but it is also sometimes hard existing in a space where you maybe want a partner that is able to provide in different aspects. At the end of the day, as a woman, we should always be able to support ourselves. Now, that's how I was brought up. That's how what I feel 100% and if I had a daughter, if I had a girl that I was responsible with nurturing, I would let her know the importance of being able to support herself. But we have to be able to trust and rely on ourselves in many ways. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically sometimes because the world is scary and we have to think about things in ways that men don't. Just leaving the house or going to the grocery store, I'm always thinking about ways that I can protect myself if unfortunately something terrible happens you know god forbid i'm always thinking about ways that i should be more aware in a world where guys don't have to think that hard so if as women as young women we're taught to be thinking we have to think for ourselves we have to think for our protection and maybe the protection of others and then we have to think about the percentage of men that are not even thinking at all and then we assume that we can rely on them we assume that they are aware enough to know when we need protection or when we need support when we need like just provision and um i think waiting and relying on something to happen that's not the way that we should necessarily do it i think we should always move to prepare ourselves move with intention in our lives so that we are okay regardless of anything that happens i think sometimes when we early on create attachments or create these codependent relationships with people outside of ourselves when those things maybe don't last as long or when those things disappear for whatever reason we feel that we're in the world alone and that's not true you know there's always a presence that is able to provide for you once you really feel tapped in and I think that's something as a woman that I want to be able to like walk in a lot more that regardless of whatever happens in my life because I know who my father is spiritually because I know who I belong to and because I know my life is in alignment with the plan that is set and made for me because I have a purpose and I'm on a mission I know that I will be provided for. I have to trust in that. 
and sometimes when life gets hard it's hard too as you grow older as a as a woman i think a lot of us realize that like we have to be able to rely on ourselves. We have to be okay. When we have our children, the children belong to us. We have to make sure that we are happy to give them the mother that they deserve. So we have to put ourselves first, period. I am so excited for this new season heading our way. There are so many women in the fight to being the woman of their dreams and I am so proud and happy to be amongst you women. Um, Y'all are inspiring me every day to continue on and do the things that I need to do. This truly is something that sets my heart on fire so the fact that I'm able to be of service to, to all of the women that I know, the women that I've encountered that have been amazing to me, the women that resonate with the messages and the videos that I have. It feels so good to know that outside of whatever my experience has been in the past, I still get to show up and create a community of amazing women. So pat yourself on the back, give yourself a drink of wine or something, you know, eat yourself something good today, pour into you today or tonight. And I hope you continue to exist in the rest of this season in the spring with the fullness of your potential and the fullness of the woman that you are meant to be in this world with so much passion and so much joy that you actually have an opportunity every single day to wake up and be who God has wanted you to be, be who God has given you the space to be. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. I hope to see you all in my next one. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.